Hi, very good morning, all of you. I am Rishi from CBIT College. Today, my topic is K means clustering. So, before I am going to the K means clustering, what is clustering? Clustering is the process of dividing the data sets into a groups consisting of similar data points. That means grouping the similar items into together. That is the main aim of clustering. Here we have the two points that is the points in the same group are similar as possible. That means in a same in, in one cluster, all the data items are in similar and points in the different groups are dissimilar as possible. That means if we take in as two clusters and the if compare the two clusters and the data points should be the dissimilar. That is the main aim of clustering. So next then came in cluster. So what is claiming came in cluster? In that we have mainly four points. That is first one is exploratory data analysis technique. That means it is analyze and explore the complete data set. That is called as exploratory data analysis technique. Then it implements non hierarchical method of grouping objects. That means it will not allow the any particular format of hierarchical method, but will take the data sets as they come in and then group them together. That is and determine that and in this k-mean clustering we have to find the we have to determine the centroids and the distance between the centroid to data point that is based on the euclidean distance and finally we have to group the objects based on the minimum distance that is the main k-mean cluster this is the flow chart for we have to start uh, start and input the number of cluster it means this is the input here k mean clustering here k represents the number of clusters after we decide the cluster size we calculate the centroid and after calculate the centroids we need to, we need to calculate the distance between the data point to centroid and finally grouping the based on the minimum distance that means the data point is the data point should be which cluster that is represent that is the grouping this process is repeated until this process either when we get the consistency in the cluster or size or cluster assignments. This is the flowchart and then this is the algorithm. And the, we have total six steps. That is first step is consisting select the number of clusters to be identified. That means here K represents that is the number of clusters. In step two, randomly select the K distinct data points. That means centroids. You need to randomly select the centroids. And third one. So, Third, third step is measuring the distance between the first point to the selected clusters. That means when we have three clusters, we need to we need to find the distance between first point to first cluster and first point to second cluster and first point to third cluster. That is step four, assign the first point to the nearest cluster. And step five, calculate the mean value including the new point for the assigning cluster. That means when, when we have the k equals three, so we have three clusters. And the first point is nearer to the second cluster. So at that time, we need to find the mean value for the how many data points are presenting in the second cluster. So uh, we using all the data points, we need to find the mean value. That is when what is the mean value that should be the centroid. That is the main. Mm, by using this mean value, we need to find the every centroids and, and repeat the same process, the same procedure until we get the clusters. So this is the example. So we have 185, 72, and once these are the data points 185, 72, and 170, 56, 168, 60, 179, 72, 182, 72, 188, and 71. So we have total six data points. And uh, here we here I have given k equals to 2, that is the input, and I found that. I ran, randomly I'm selecting the first two are the two cluster data points. That is here K1 is 185, 72. This is the centroid and K2, 170 and 56. This is the centroid. So now we need to find the Euclidean distance. So the Euclidean distance formula is root square root of X0 minus XC whole square plus Y0 minus YC whole square. That means X0 is observed. That means which data point we need the first data point. That is 160 and 60. Here, X naught is 168 and XC this is the centroid, first centroid, that is 185. This is the servo, obviously. Similarly, Y naught is 60 and YC is 72. Here I am finding the Euclid distance for the third one. That means 
the 168 and 60. We need to find the distance between the first K1. I mean, first point to first cluster and second first point to second cluster. That is here. 6 not minus 60. That is 168 minus 185. And 60 minus 72. That is 168 minus 60, 185. Plus 60 minus 72. The square root of total is 20.80. And similarly, K2. So 168 minus 170, 60 minus 56. That's it. So here we get 4.48. This is the square root. So which is nearer one? K2 is the nearer one. <coughs> so now the data point uh, will be available in the K2. K2 that is the one data point. And so now we need to find the new central value by using the mean value. So we need to find the mean values for the which one third point and it, this is uh, consisting second cluster. So we need to find the mean value. So mean value is 168 plus 172, the number of observations, sorry, sum of the observations by number of observations. So 168 plus 170 by two and 60 plus 56 by two. Uh, this is the calculation. That is 170 plus 168 plus 169. 60 plus 56 by two is 58. So here, so the new centroid is 169 and 58 is the new center. So similarly now, we need to take the second and that is 179 and 72. So this is Euclidean distance for the fourth point. Uh, when we're using the K1, this is, we can get the 6.3. When we're using the K2 as a second center, that is 14.4. So the data point should be consistent in K1. So, when we repeat this the same process, same procedure, we get can get a final result that is K1 consistent one, four, five, six data points. That means one and 185 and 179, 182, 180. These four should be available in K1 cluster and 170 and 168 will be available in second cluster. So this is the K min clustering. And this is the non-matrix factorization. So mainly why are we using the non-matrix factors? So non-matrix factors in which was originally investigated as a dimensional, dimensionality reduction technique. He emerged as an effective latent feature learning method. <coughs> when we are using subspace clustering, that means subspace clustering means when we have the so many dimensions and it is a large data set. So at that time we need to divide at the dimensions. That is, uh, let's take an example. Uh, input non data that is first x matrix that is the d by n that is the x matrix dimension so that should be available into two so each column x is future vector of one okay the product can adequately approximate the original matrix x that means w e so x should be available x should be divided into w and h matrix w is consistence of d by p d by p dimension h is p by n dimension so when we get multiplication d by n uh, dimension, that is the non-matrix factorization. Here, the former of W matrix is termed as basis matrix, and the latter matrix H is termed as the person matrix. This is the non-matrix factorization. Thank you.